I'm just gonna go for it. This is so long overdue, like months. Months. I'm Steen, I'm your host. It's like the fourth day of February 2021, a whole new year, a whole new you. I am like four years and two months on testosterone. I didn't do a four year update. Here's my buddy Chester. But I wanted to, but I didn't. I think one of the things about making videos is in light of the world and everything going on, it's like my little my little life seems really tiny. But even with all the stuff going on in the world, the transition continues. And it's a process unto itself. And it doesn't stop because the world has stopped or been put on pause or gone south or whatever. So I wanted to talk about that. And I wanted to talk about where I'm at and um, where Chester's at. I Yeah, four years, two months. Um, stuff is really... It, I'll talk about the physical stuff. I never get, like, get deep into that. Stuff is very stabilized. Stuff is gradual. My facial hair grows back really quickly now, if and when I shave it, which I have done a couple times. I'm not going to say unintentionally. I'm just say unplanned. And, um, yeah, and I'm, I'm happy with it. It's something I always wanted. And I, I was actually thinking about how, how attached I become to it that I don't want to touch it. And yet one of the things that draws me, one of the things I love about having it is being able to change it. So got to balance those two. We, he and I, me and Chester, we have spent so much quality time together for about a year now, right? Yeah, all the time, all the time. Lots of time, lots of resting time, lots of decompressing, lots of letting go of the... Um, the pressures of the world, stuff like that. So, physical. That's what's going on. My dose is the same as it's been. I've just, uh, I just had a doctor's appointment today, and so I'm going to switch to sub-Q um, simply because sometimes I feel like I'm running out of places <laughs> on my legs. So I'm going to try that. I'm going to see how it is dosing-wise. Um, I do testosterone and anthate. I'm going to still stay with that. And we're going to check my labs in a couple months and see if I'm still in range. Whoa, buddy. I'm still drinking coffee. Yes, I am. Uh, one of the things that happened with the stress of working in a grocery store during COVID is I um, felt a kind of uh, disproportionate need to treat myself. And so I ended up getting myself a really nice home espresso machine because I don't really go out for coffee anymore. And I enjoy it. And um, I've done that. Hi, bud. And um, I have also done, I have treated myself to a whole lot of art supplies. If you follow me on Instagram, you know that I'm, I'm doing like a different challenge each. Somebody's rubbing the thing that the camera's on. Hey, buddy, come on over. Um, I'm doing a different art type challenge each month. And I put it up on my story there. And I, oh, but, oh. okay, so he's, good lord, this is so well done, isn't it? It's such a well done video, but I'm not going to change it, because this is my style. Come here, bud, just so you can see, because, because I'm back to my old ways of just having like the most shoddy video set up on earth. So here we are. Yeah, so different art supply uh, challenge, and now it's crooked, but whatever. Um, and that comes from realizing that in the face of COVID, I really felt like I had run out of things to look forward to. And, it, and it's not about transition. It's just about like feeling like you can go somewhere or do something. And um, really the last time I did anything, like had any kind of real adventure other than going to work and dealing with people there, uh, was I went to Portland like a year ago to see Trixie Mattel. And that was my last real adventure. So, yes. So yeah, the art supply thing. Um, switching to uh, 
there, I'm just gonna do this. Sorry, I'm like really super unprofessional, but you gotta work with me, people. Uh, switching to sub Q to see how that is. Um, I'm like doing like the medical. I feel like I'm, you know, I don't know, updating on the unseens. Uh, I still have a uterus. Um, I wasn't planning on having to get rid of it. I'm, I'm experiencing a little bit of crampy type stuff, which I um, trans started my transition post-menopause. So those days were over, um, but I have just had a little bit of sensation as though something's changing, and so I had a, I'm gonna go for an ultrasound and just take a look at it. I do not have a problem with having pap smears or having pelvic exams. I had many years of that before I transitioned, and it's just part of having the parts. So I'm going to look into that, see what's going on with that. But other than that, I feel pretty good. I've been doing the intermittent fasting thing for quite a while now. And that really works well for me. Um, and I've erred a little more towards low-carb type stuff um, just because I've read a lot about about insulin resistance and blood sugar stuff. And so um, I think it's helpful for me to, to do that. So... Yeah, that's it. I mean, here I am. I'm in my life. Um, I feel like the pause button has been pressed for almost a year now in terms of life as I once knew it, life as any of us once knew it. But I'm getting by and I'm getting through. And um, I do therapy as part of that. I do art as part of that. I do a lot of resting as part of that. And I think that just comes from the stress of uh, the environment that I work in, which is uh, being an essential worker and having some experiences with people being really irate about um, having to wear a mask in our store and people being abusive about having to wear a mask in our store. And so it's really been an interesting thing to step into those situations uh, as male and feeling the potential for violence as male, feeling how irate people can be, uh, feeling how men can treat other men. I don't know, it's just, it's been an interesting experience to experience that and have a, a different visceral sense, and also having a different visceral sense of being calm in myself and grounded in myself in those situations, so that I think I'm. it's easier for me to bring a lot more calm uh, to those situations and a lot more groundedness for myself. And, and you know, another thing that I've been, I don't know, you know, it's the thing about passing and the thing about living in your life um, and a life that you didn't live before is there's a quietness to it, and it, it's not about being isolated. It's about, there's a certain amount of solitude that I enjoy now. There's a certain amount of self-reliance that I enjoy. Um, I can see where men get too isolated. I think, I think we all have that in us, and I think that trans guys, we have it as well. And some of that is that sense of isolation, you know, like I'm not out at work. I don't want to be out at work. I really like, I really like it not being a thing at work. And sometimes I feel guilty about that. Sometimes I feel guilty that I am not out representing everywhere that I go. But I also really like just being me. <laughs> and not having to explain anything, not having to carry my entire past and present it to everyone. Um, just as I really like not having to present my entire emotional landscape to everyone. And it's not expected of me. And, you know, I, I have these moments of like feeling great relief. Great relief that I don't, you know, with the help of testosterone, I don't really go there. I don't really f feel compelled. Um, and even in my experiences of my emotional self, I'm able to step back a little bit more and observe and 
have a certain amount of gratitude. You know, I have gratitude for this whole journey. I have gratitude that I am more emotionally available because than many people and than many men because I was socialized female. And so there are things that I learned being socialized female that are great tools living as a man. It's a great juxtaposition, isn't it? Anyway, I'm already here at 10 minutes, so um, I might edit this down to get the cat dropping the camera thing out. I might not. I might just throw it up with no intro, no nothing. But I wanted to let you know I'm good. Um, Self-inflicted haircuts abound. Uh, my hairline is actually still pretty good. It's just that I cut all my hair off. Um, yeah, I guess if you have any questions for me, put them down in the comments. Um, let me know where you're at. If you're somebody who's watched regularly, tell me how you're doing. Um, I am on Instagram. I think there's a link up there, up there, up there. And I've been using that uh, honestly as a way of being a little bit less isolated. So that's how it is. It's one of those things, um, you know, I... I enjoy my work. I enjoy my job. My job is pretty physical. It's pretty intense. I, I realized the other day I do 10 to 8,000 steps a day at the store combined with lifting and squatting and kneeling and all this stuff in an eight-hour period. So I really, um, in light of that, in light of sometimes the intensity of the job, in light of really trying to take good care of myself, like health-wise... Um, I don't do much and I'm okay with that. I know that this too shall pass and, um, there'll be a new normal around the corner and I think it's going to be a great normal. It's just one that we don't know about. And I think the biggest challenge, just like with transition, I think transition in some ways is a valuable tool in getting through something like this is it's not to be in the past and what could have been or what was or how great it was. And it's not to be in the future of this intangible of like, where am I going to be? But it's to be here now. Which is where we are. So, okay. Philosophical as usual. I hope you're doing great. And um, I hope to be back here soon with something to offer you. There's something you want to see, something you want to talk about, something you want to know about. Put it in the comments and that might light a fire. Okay. Hope you're doing great. Take care. Bye.